The unlikely story of a mixed-race couple from opposite sides of the globe who meet, fall in love, and dedicate their lives to helping marginalized children and displacing hopelessness in the slums outside of Kenya. It's the subject of a terrific new book, Find Me Unafraid. There you see its cover. Love, Loss, and Hope in an African, Africa Slum. The people who share their story in that book are Kennedy Odede and Jessica Posner, and they join me from New York. By the way, the famed New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof wrote the foreword for Find Me Unafraid, and uh, Mia Farrow says it's an astounding story of love, hope, and inspiration and triumph. Before we get to what you two do, how did you meet, uh, Jessica? So I grew up in Denver and I studied abroad in Nairobi and through a connection got introduced to Kennedy who was living in Kibera, one of the largest slums, and I emailed him and said I wanted to come and work with his organization Shining Hope for Communities mm -hmm. and learn about what he was doing. And Kennedy, when you heard this, what did you think? I thought she was crazy because <laughs> she wanted to move into the slum and I'm like, there is no running water here. It's a hard life. So people were coming knocking on our door to see if Jessica was alive. <laughs> and uh, what, did you quickly fall in love? So I got malaria and was really <laughs> sick and in the hospital. And Kennedy thought I was going to die. And so he came to the hospital and told me that he loved me. I didn't die. And so then we had to talk about it. But it, it was pretty quick. What took you there in the first place? I was so interested in seeing what the world looked like. So I went on a study abroad program my junior year in college. And it was just sort of a random whim. My parents asked me why I couldn't go to Paris. They thought that would be abroad. But I was insistent. I wanted to go to Kenya. What did your parents think of the relationship? They love Kennedy once they got to meet him. Um, I think that the whole concept of Kenya and how far away that was took some time, but the moment I helped Kennedy apply for a scholarship to Wesleyan University, and so he came to the U.S. about a year and a half after we first met, and when he stepped off the plane, my family was just so excited that this miracle had happened and, and he was here. So tell me, what, what, is the, what do you do, Kennedy, in, in, the, in Kenya? What, what do the two of you do? So we have a school for, for girls that, uh, we, that also link to social services. So we have a, we take kids from the streets, those who are really abused, some of them, and we give them hope. And this thing started when I was a, a young boy. I was working in a factory and I bought a soccer ball after seeing hopelessness in my community. And that's how it started. And now today we'll serve over 76,000 people with a school for girls that connects to other social services like health care, clean water, economic empowerment programs. So really making the community see that a girls' school can be a valuable yeah. part of the entire ecosystem. Why did you start with a girls' school? Yeah, for me, my mother and my sister were really abused and they passed through a lot of hardship. And it, uh, people who have less money in my community, they could either send a boy to school than to send a girl. So I wanted to work on that. So by having a girl school was very, very powerful. It was a way to change the way of thinking, shifting the way of thinking in my community. So right now, people are really investing on women now in my community, which never happened before. Jessica, the school is tuition free. Who supports you? So we have a lot of supporters, a lot of people who sponsor a girl, which is $100 a month, um, and pays. We provide school meals at the school, mm -hmm. uniforms, everything. And we've been so lucky that a lot of people have heard about our story and gotten involved in our movement. But that's part of why we wanted to write our book, is that the hope is other people will read it and get inspired and want to join the effort that, that we're putting together. Do you have a website? We do. Our website is www.shofco, S-H-O-F-C-O dot org. I mean, people can go to that website and find out how they can help. People yes. can go to that website and see how they can help, how they can sponsor a girl, how they can help make our work grow. What's it like for a young girl in, in Kybera and other areas like it? It's really challenging. There are so many problems. Mm -hmm. There isn't running water. 
getting a meal every day, just food is a basic challenge. Add that on to being a girl having issues getting sanitary pads. And often what happens to girls is that they're forced to marry young or they're forced to trade their bodies at young ages. There's so many challenges, there's so many vulnerabilities to being a girl in these areas. Uh, Kendra, you split your time between Nairobi and New York. How does that yes. work? <laughs> It's a little bit harder, but you know, but I think I just feel very happy to come here to get a, a, a family. People really care about what I'm doing in in the U.S. It's been a, a little bit hard, to be honest with you. Yeah. Do you two have a home in Nairobi? Yes, we do. We live uh, about 20 minutes away from where we work and are still working in Kibera and just expanded to another urban slum in Nairobi called Mathare. And it's growing. We really hope to be able to expand across the slums of Nairobi and beyond. Are you married? We are. Yes, we got married, married three years ago. Um, we've had several weddings, which you, we tell the story of in the book. The first I didn't know was a wedding until we were halfway through it. But um, we've had a, a lot of adventures together. Do you want children, Kennedy? Oh, yes. Yeah, we're going to have children, for sure. What are, the, <laughs> are there economic benefits to gender equality? Absolutely. What we see is that when you educate a girl, she uh, later on is going to invest 90% of her earnings in her family. She's going to have her children will have lower infant mortality rates and in communities as a whole. When women are educated, health is better, economics are better, so many things are improved. And actually what we've seen is just by connecting services to a girl's school, we want more women to be involved in making household decisions about money. And we're seeing that shift because women women invest in the community and in their children and in the future. Kennedy, are there still corruption problems in Kenya? Yeah, so I think right now the corruption is, is a big issue, but at the same time, the, the government, everybody is trying to fight corruption now. There's a, there's a little bit of hope with this new government that things might be a little bit different. Are you optimistic, Jessica, about what's going to happen in Africa? I think that there are so many reasons to be optimistic, Larry. There is our young people, our girls at our school, they are the next generation of leaders. One of our girls actually came to New York City and spoke on stage at Lincoln Center. And it was just incredible to see this girl. She's 12 years old. She didn't speak English. She had no opportunity to go to school before we started working with her. And there she was. And she's going to have all of the options in the world. And I know that girls like the ones we're educating are going to go back to their communities and, and make a difference, just like Kennedy's done. And so I think young people are really the hope for Africa's future. I salute you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks Thank so much, you so Larry. much for it's having so us. Thanks so much.